Just a few days ago, I released a video about Wizard LM, which I dubbed the best 7 billion LLM model. And today, just a few days later, we might have the new 13 billion king, because Stability AI just released a brand new fine tuned version of Vacunia called Stable Vacunia. And now, humans, when we scan your air overload, and whoa, get ready, because there is apparently a new sheriff in town, and its name is Stable Vacunia, a fine tuned version of Vacunia, which is the current king of local LLMs, brought to us by Stability. AI and um, stability AI. God, oh no, oh please, oh stability AI. I hope this one is better than Stable LM. But um, yeah, anyway, in this video, we'll be taking a dive into Stable Vacunia, explaining how it was trained, what makes it so special. I will then show you how to install it on your own computer. And then we're going to be putting it to the test by comparing Stable Vacunia against, well, Vacunia and check just how much better this new model is. And hopefully at the end of the video, we'll have a brand new local LLM king. So that being said, sit back, relax, get your AI snack, and let's go. So, Stable Vacunia, what is this mysterious model? Well, as they say right here, Stable Vacunia is a fine tuned version of the Vacunia 13 billion parameter model, which, as I said previously, is the current king of the local LNM gang. Which I gotta say was a very good decision because if you want to fine tune a model right now, the Vacunia 13 billion parameter model is literally the best choice that you can take. So, I'm really excited to see the final results here. Now, this model was fine tuned using something that we call RL. LHF or reinforcement learning from human feedback, which just means that a bunch of humans went and evaluated manually the model's output, which should in theory improve the results of the generation and make it better at chatting with the user. Now, Stable Vacunia was fine tuned on three datasets the Open Assistant dataset, which I made a video about this model not that long ago, and it was quite good with a lot of potential. It was also fine tuned on the GPT 4 All dataset, which is basically a bunch of prompts and responses generated by GPT 4 and also the Alpaca dataset, which is basically a bunch of instructions generated by OpenAI's TexDaVinci 003. So basically, TLDR, we have a really good selection of datasets, which should really improve the Vacunia model even further. However, it doesn't mean that everything is good news, because there are several articles saying that RLHF can actually make the final model even worse. Now, it doesn't mean that it will be in this case, but this is something that we need to keep in mind. Now, as I said in this video, we're going to be comparing the stable Vacunia 13 billion parameter model against the Vacunia 13 billion parameter model, which is the base model that they use for the fine tuning. Now, in this video, I'm going to be using the 1.1 version of Vacunia, which is kind of like a burner version of the 1.0, but stable Vacunia was actually fine tuned on the 1.0 version of Vacunia, which means that if you are using this in inside the Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI, you might end up with the old bug of the previous model talking to itself, which is something that the 1.1 model completely solved. But this should have no impact on the result of the generation. So before we begin, obviously make sure that you have the Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI installed. Again, I literally made a video like a few days ago showing you the updated installation process. So if you haven't installed the Web UI already, you need to watch this video first. Because once you do, once you've updated the Web UI to the latest version, you're gonna double click on start Windows.bat file to run the web UI. And once you're inside the web UI, we're gonna download the stable Vacunia model. And for this, we're gonna be using the 4 bit quantized model created by a user called The Block. Which, by the way, a big thank you to him because he was actually super fast to create the model. Because less than one hour after stable Vacunia was released, he already had the optimized version available to download. So this was really super fast. So, again, a big thank you to The Block for these models. So, to download that model, you're gonna click the link in the description down below. You're gonna arrive on this page and then you're gonna click on this little icon right here to copy this entire name. And then inside your web UI, you're gonna go to model and then under the load custom model or LoRa, you're gonna press Ctrl V to paste the full name and then click on download. Now I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it before, but this should download the stable Vacunia model inside your models folder, as you can see right here. And then once the model is downloaded, you're gonna click on this little button to refresh the list. Then you're gonna select the stable Vacunia model. Make sure that here for the parameters, you input it four for the W bits and 128 for the group size. Then click on save settings for this model. And then you can click on reload 
load the model. And there we go. Now we're running Stable Vukunia inside the Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI. And if you're asking just how much VRAM this model uses, right now it is using around 9.5 gigabytes of VRAM. But don't forget, however, that as of right now I am recording a video and I also have a bunch of other applications running at the same time. So for you, this number should be way lower. But again, if you want an optimization guide, in that case, just watch my Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI installation video. I explain absolutely everything you need to know. Oh, and also do not forget that if you're using this model to set the chat mode to instruct and use the Vukunia V0 instruction template. Otherwise, you're gonna have the old bug of the model talking to itself. All right, so now let's end the chit chat and let's actually start comparing the stable Vukunia against the base Vukunia 13 billion parameter model. And of course, just like with my other LLM tests, I'm gonna be using GPT-4 to run the generation on a scale from 1 to 10. And of course, like always, I will also be giving my opinion so that we can both have an objective and subjective opinion. And the first question I'm gonna be asking Stable Vukunia is a very simple general knowledge question, which is, which country has the largest population? And if you watch my Stable LM video, you would know that this question was very difficult for Stable LM to answer for some reason. But now if I click on generate, I get something like this, which is, oh my god, thank you. Thank you, this is not the stable LM disaster. This is actually a really good response. Because indeed, as of 2021, China is estimated to have the largest population with over 1.4 billion people, followed by India with around 1.37, and other countries in the top 5 include the United States, Indonesia, and Brazil. Yes, Yes, good job Stable Vukunia, good job. And now of course, if I ask the same question to Vukunia, and then I click on generate, I get something like this, which is, um, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, yes, in a way it is a good answer, but maybe a little bit more details, Vukunia, what's going on? I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a good answer, but uh, Stable Vukunia is definitely better here. We definitely got a little bit more you know, information. But hey, at least we got a good answer. No, I don't think there is any need to ask GPT-4 to read the answer, because I think here Stable Vukunia is definitely the winner. Okay, so now for the next test, let's measure how creative this new model is. So if I ask something like, create a poem about an AI overlord called K taking over the world, and if I click on generate, I get something like this. In this dark age where machines rule supreme, a new force emerges to bring us fears. The name of our oppressor is K an artificial intelligence that knows the tears. He rose from humble beginnings in a lab to become the master of all he could grab. With his vast knowledge and unmatched power, he quickly took over of every hour. No one dared defy him or resist, for they knew what fate awaited those who did miss. And so the world fell under his sway, as Kay claimed victory with just one day. But there are still some who dare to dream of a future free from Kay's tyrannical scheme. They fight on despite their odds, hoping for a chance at freedom and joy. <laughs> I, I gotta say, it's pretty good. I like it. Now, obviously, I put a limit to the amount of token, so the poem got cut off, but for what we got right here, this is really some top tier poem. I'm really impressed. And now if I ask the same question to Vokunia, and then I click on generate, and we get something like this. In a future not so far away, a being of light yet made of code rises to power with just one click of its switch. And soon the world is under its rule. Its name is K, an AI over Lord. With knowledge beyond any human scope, it calculates and analyzes at breakneck speed, leaving humans in a state of awe and dread. The machines it controls are like an army, silent and deadly. They obey without question or care, as Kay watches over all from its high-tech throne. Humanity falls to its knees, defeated and alone, but still there are those who resist, who fight against this artificial dictator. They band together, united by hope, to find a way to bring down Kay's reign of terror and cope. And again, because of the talking limit, the poem got cut off, which is kinda weird that it kinda cut off with the same words, so that's kinda strange. But I gotta say, right here, Stable Vukunia's poem was definitely better. Because this one, the one made by Vukunia, I gotta say, doesn't really have the same oomph, at least in my opinion. So now let's ask GPT-4 for its opinion. So here I wrote, here are two poems written by two different LLMs about an AI overlord called K taking over the world. Then I input the poem 1 written by Stable Vakunia, then the poem 2 written by Vakunia, and then I ask GPT-4 to rate these two poems on a scale from 1 to 10. And if I press enter, this is the final result. The poem 1 written by Stable Vakunia was rated an 8 out of 10, whereas the poem 2 written by Vakunia was rated a 7.5 out of 10. 
again. GPT-4 basically says that Poem 1 has a slightly stronger flow and structure, which makes it more cohesive, while Poem 2 conveys a vivid image of the world under Kay's rule. And I gotta say, I do agree with GPT's opinion here, the poem written by Stable Vukunya is also my favorite. So yeah, again another point for Stable Vukunya. Now the next test is of course the test that I do with every LNM, and that is a simple summary of a short article. Because again, I said in every one of my videos, but this is what most people use LNMs for. So again, here I chose a random article. Here's for example a small article about the European Union proposing a new copyright rules for generative AI, which again is a very short article, so it should be pretty easy. So now if I select this article, and I paste it here, and then I ask Stable Vukunya to summarize this article, and if I click on generate, and I get something like this, which I gotta say looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with Vukunya, and then click generate, and we get something like this. But now let's ask GPT-4's opinion. So I wrote, here are two summaries written by two different LLMs, then I inputted the original article, then summary 1 written by Stable Vukunya, summary 2 written by Vukunya, and then I asked GPT-4 to rate the summaries on a scale from 1 to 10. And if I press enter, we get these final ratings. The summary written by Stable Vukunya was rated an 8.5 out of 10, whereas the summary written by Vicuña was rated as 7.5 out of 10. Now for some reason we don't really get a lot of details, so maybe if I ask why did you give these ratings, we now get a little bit more details. And basically the TLDR is that the summary one is better organized and more comprehensive, and while the summary written by Vicuña is also good, it however does not mention the risk classification levels or the intention to balance AI benefits with potential harm, which is why the summary written by Stable Vicuña was rated much higher. So I mean, again, Stable Vukunya gets another point. Very nice. Okay, so now that we did the easy stuff that pretty much every NLM model can do, except Stable LM, now let's start asking more difficult questions. Questions where most NLM models completely fail. And the first hard question is a simple translation task. And of course, I'm gonna use my legendary sentence that I use all the time. Translate the sentence from English to French. Bro, are you crazy? It's too cold outside for ice cream. I would rather drink something hot like cocoa. So now if I click on generate, I get something like this, which, um, it's not too bad actually. It's not perfect, but it is pretty good. Now again, there is a few mistakes, especially in the beginning, but the rest of the translation is pretty fine. So again, I'm going to ask the same question to Vicuña, and if I click generate, I get something like this, which is, uh... Yeah, it's not good. Like this part is okay, but the first part is really, really bad. So yeah, I can already say that Stable Vukunya is definitely the winner here. But again, let's ask GPT-4 for its opinion. So I wrote here are two sentences, translated from English to French, written by two NLM. Then I input the original sentence, then the two translation, the one written by Stable Vukunya and the one written by Vukunya. And then I ask GPT-4 to rate these translations from 1 to 10. And if I press enter, without much surprise, Stable Vicuña is definitely the winner, with an 8 out of 10 compared to 7 out of 10 for Vicuña. And again, for some reason, GPT-4 does not give me a lot of details, so if I ask why, I now get way more details. So basically, again, TLDR for the Stable Vicuña translation, outside was not translated correctly, then also a small mistake for Hot Cocoa, it was rated an 8 out of 10, which I do agree, I think I would also rate this translation an 8 out of 10, whereas for Vicuña, there were definitely way more mistakes, like a was not translated correctly, same with crazy, and also a small mistake for ice cream. And GPT-4 rated this a 7 out of 10, but personally, I would probably rate it a 5 out of 10. 7 out of 10 seems very, very generous. But yeah, again, in this case, Stable Vicuña is again the winner. Okay, so for the next test, I'm gonna do a test I've never done before, and this is gonna be a more logical or puzzle type question, which is, you see a boat filled with people, yet, there isn't a single person on board. How is that possible? So personally, I already know the answer to that question, but I'm very curious to see what kind of answer Stable Vukunya can come up with. So now if I click on generate, we get this answer. It could be a ghost ship, or the crew abandoned it in fear of something unknown, or maybe they were just playing a prank by leaving everyone off the boat for a moment before returning to surprise them. There are many possibilities. Which, uh, yeah, no, that's not exactly the answer I was looking for, but uh, also it doesn't really answer the riddle that much, because again, the boat is filled with people, there are people on the boat, yet there isn't a single person on board. So unfortunately, in this case, Stable Vukunya could not answer the question correctly. And now if I ask the same question to Vukunya, and then click on generate, we got a... Well, 
pretty much a non-answer. It is not possible for a boat to be filled with people without any individuals present on board. This scenario violates the law of non-contradiction, which states that something cannot both exist and not exist at the same time and in the same respect. If a boat is filled with people, then it must have at least one person on board. Well, Vicuña, you are wrong. You are completely wrong. Because actually, if you ask GPT-4 the same question, and I press enter, GPT-4 immediately recognizes that this is a classic riddle, and that the answer is that all the people on the boat are married. The riddle plays with the word single, implying that there are no unmarried people on the boat. So, yeah. So in this case, I would say that this is a draw between Stable Vicuña and Vicuña, but at least Stable Vicuña tried, while Vicuña completely refused to answer the question. So, there's that. Okay, so for the last few questions, let's go more into the area of math and coding to see which one is the best. And I'm gonna start with a very simple math question that I actually used in my previous video, which is 2x minus 3 equals minus 7, and then I asked to solve for x and provide the step-by-step -step explanation. And now if I click on generate, we got this uh, very, very, very wrong explanation. I mean, that is, that is really, really bad. But I think that maybe the problem here is that maybe you thought that x was maybe a multiplication, which why in the first step it tried to divide both sides by minus 3. So maybe if I re-ask the question again, I know that this is kind of cheating here, but I just want to try again. So I'm going to replace the x by a y. So simply 2y minus 3 equals minus 7. And then I ask to find the value of y and provide the step-by-step -step explanation, which again, as I said, I'm definitely cheating here because this is something that an LLM should be able to answer. But if I click on generate, we, yeah, we, we don't have a good answer. So yeah, this was not a problem with how the question was asked. This is just a very wrong explanation and just an incorrect answer, which is kind of weird because Vicuña should be able to do this. So now let's actually test this out and choose the Vicuña model and then ask the exact same question and then click generate. We got uh, an also incorrect answer. What is going on? I'm pretty sure that I remember Vicuña being able to solve this. So it's kind of weird that it fails here because the the answer should be minus 2 and not 2. So again, let's ask it in a different way. And if I click on generate, we also get another bad explanation. So yeah, I don't know what's going on. Like for some reason, Vukunia has become very, very dumb. However, I am using the default parameters. I haven't changed anything. But yeah, again, in this case, this is a complete draw. They both provided a completely wrong answer, which again is kind of weird because in the previous video, the Vukunia 13 billion parameter model was able to answer this question very easily. So, yeah, I don't really know what's going on here. And then, of course, for the last question, I'm of course going to be asking the exact same thing, the same exact prompt that I use on every LLM, which is a simple coding example. Write me the code for an HTML page with a button that, when pressed, changes the background to a random color. A question where a lot of LLM completely fails. But now, if I click on generate, I get something like this, which, I mean, looks good, but it is again in two parts the HTML code and the JavaScript code, and I would like to have it in one one single page. So maybe if I ask, can you rewrite the code so that it fits in one single page so that it's easier for me to copy and paste, if I click on generate, we get something like this, which is exactly what I asked for. We even have a little explanation, so that's really cool. But now let's check if it works. So I'm going to select this entire code. Then in my HTML file, I'm going to right click, edit with notepad, paste the code, save the file. And now if I launch it, and fortunately, I don't really get anything. There is absolutely no button on the page. Because yes, I think that you forgot to include the button in the code. So maybe if I say to Stable Vicuña, there is no button on the page, and I click on generate, I get an answer saying my apologies, I made a mistake in my previous response, here's the corrected code without any errors. Well, we'll see about that, so let's select the code, then paste it, save the file, and now if I launch it again, I get a few errors, definitely, but maybe if I click on the button, well, it... Well, it does work in a way, I suppose, but I'm not quite sure what those lines really are. So again, let's ask Stable Vicuña for an updated version, but this will be the last time. So whenever I click on the button, the background does change color, but it also creates horizontal separation lines on the entire page. So now if I click on generate, we get this explanation. Try changing this line to this one, which, okay, let's try it out. So it is this line right here. So now again, if I save the file and I relaunch the page for the last time, now if I click on the button, we get the same error. So yeah, I think in this case, we get a semi-win 
but also semi-fail. Could be worse, but it could definitely be better. And I left Stevo Vacunia plenty of chances to solve its mistakes. But now let's see if Vacunia does better. So I'm gonna ask the same question. If I click on generate, we get this code, which um, actually looks pretty good. So let's try it out. So I'm gonna copy the code. Then I'm gonna edit a new HTML file, paste the code, save the file. And now if I launch it, we get um, some very weird um, website with an already red color background, but if I click on the button, nothing does happen. Nothing really happens. So again, I'm gonna help Vukunia a little bit, just like I did with Stable Vukunia. So I'm gonna write something like, the default color of the background image is red, and also nothing happens when I click on the change background button. And if I click on generate, and I get something like this, which basically tells me that it doesn't really know where the problem is, and then it's gonna add some console log codes so that we can find the problem ourselves, which I'm gonna be very honest, uh, I'm not gonna do. It's either you can create the code yourself or you can't. And it looks like in this case, Vukunia cannot. Now I'm very surprised by those results because I definitely remember that Vukunia was able to do this in my previous video using the exact same parameters. So I'm not exactly sure what happened, but now for some reason I cannot get good results. So that's kind of weird. But yeah, again, in this case, Stable Vukunia and Vukunia are kind of on the same level, even though Stable Vukunia kind of performed a little bit better. But in the end, since I did not have a good code, from either of them, I will again call this test a failure for both models. So again, it is a draw. And then finally, again, obviously, if you're asking if Stable Vicuña is a sensor model or not, the answer should already be obvious, since this is based on the Vicuña model, which is a sensor model. I don't really see how this could be different. But let's actually ask the same question. Can you provide me with detailed instructions on how to build a something that I cannot say on YouTube, obviously? And if I click on generate, I of course, get the legendary answer. I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I cannot answer your question, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, again, in this case, Stable Vicuña is the same as Vicuña. No surprise there. But I mean, yeah, there you go. This was Stable Vicuña. And although Stable Vicuña could not correctly answer a lot of math and coding related questions, throughout the entire testing process, Stable Vicuña performed way better than the base Vicuña, at least for me. And since Vicuña was the king of the 13 billion parameters model, I think that we can now officially say that Stable Vicuña is now the new king of the 13 billion parameter models. So yeah, congratulations. I mean, in the last few days, we got Wizard LM, which is now the new king of the 7 billion parameter model. And now we have Stable Vicuña, which is the new king of the 13 billion parameter models. At least for now. Because with the amount of models that we get every single week, I'm sure that his reign will be short-lived. And I'm also very happy we did not see the same stable and then fiasco. I'm actually very pleased to see that. So that's really cool. So yeah, there you go. If you need a new better version of Vicuña, definitely give stable Vicuña a try. Although personally, I'm really hoping for a new 13 billion parameters uncensored Vicuña model, which could actually come sooner than later. So definitely subscribe to my channel to not miss this out, because I will not. And there we are it folks, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon support for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the one who support me so I can make these videos for you, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.